And now for our story. Lily Devon had arrived in Wakefield late this afternoon. Now in her room at the Brown Palace Hotel, Lily is busily engaged in various calculations which are contained in scattered sheets of hotel stationery. Come in. Well, hello, Lily. Oh, Aunt Mary. Gosh, this is a nice surprise having a visitor already. Well, I was in town anyway, and I wanted to come up and say hello. <laughs> I sort of appointed myself as a committee of one to welcome you. Oh, swell. <laughs> Sit down, won't you? Well, I, I will for a minute. If you're sure I'm not interrupting you, you seem to be elbow deep in work already. Oh, isn't this place a mess? Papers all over and I haven't even finished unpacking. But I wanted to get underway first thing tomorrow morning and there are a couple of things I had to see to right away. Well, you're certainly going into this thing with a lot of enthusiasm. It makes me very happy. Knowing this little dream of mine will be a reality before long. Oh, me too, Aunt Mary. You know, I never thought of my kind of work being a way to help anybody. But if this works out, that's what it amounts to, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, I've been reading about how the kids were thrown out of kilter, sort of, by the war. It makes me feel good, knowing I might be able to help things a little here in Wakefield. It's wonderful that you have that attitude, my dear. Understanding just how important it is. Oh, nothing wonderful, Aunt Mary. I just hope I'll make a success of it. Oh, I'm not a bit worried about you making a go of the supper club, Lily. <laughs> Especially when I see the way you dive right in here the minute you get into town. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm so sorry Randy wasn't able to meet you at the station. But he had to go over to Huntsville this afternoon. Oh, that's all right. I managed to locate the taxi man. He brought me up here to the hotel. You're lucky you found him. <laughs> oh, Mr. Peterson isn't very reliable. If he takes it into his head to go fishing or something like that, he just disappears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he was playing pinochle with the station master this afternoon. I think he was a little sore at me for breaking up the game. <laughs> One of the reasons I came right up, Lily, was that I wanted to invite you out to dinner tonight. Why, Aunt Mary... Well, after all, we don't want you to be lonesome the first night you get to town. Boy, oh, Aunt Mary, I I'd love to come. Fine. We'll have a nice long talk. I want to catch up on everything that's been going on with all of you in Chicago. Dell and Lisa. How is Lisa these days? Oh, I guess she's okay. Lisa's a funny gal in some ways. She's, well, sort of moody. Everything will be going along all right, and then all of a sudden she gets blue and depressed. No, that's too bad. But I'm sure she'll gradually get back on her feet. You see, she was so very unhappy when she was here in Wakefield. Yeah. I know. Well, we'll catch up on all the latest tonight. Fine. I'll send Randy to pick you up. Dinner will be at six. Oh, that's swell, but Randy doesn't have to come after me. I mean, I could manage to get out there somehow. Oh, no, no, dear. Randy said he'd be glad to pick you up. <laughs> it's not very often a pretty young girl arrives in town, you know. And I think you made quite an impression on him that weekend you were here. Well, Lily, you really did come back to Wakefield after all, huh? Yep. Here I am, bag and baggage. Are you glad? Oh, I guess so. I haven't had much time to stop and think about whether I am or not. The minute I got here, I got so You're busy. You're really interested I... in making a go of this scheme of moms, aren't you? Well, sure I am. First place, I think Aunt Mary's right. Those bobby Soxers do need a place to go. Besides, it's a wonderful opportunity for me. You mean getting the experience of running the place? Yeah. Yeah, I, I imagine you're right. Say, uh, by the way, what are you going to name it? Mm, I don't know yet. I haven't thought much about it. Well, uh, maybe we ought to run a contest in the Wakefield News. Uh, might be a good advertising stunt. You know, uh, uh, send in your vote, name the new supper club opening at the Brown Palace Hotel to be managed by that well-known, beautiful young singer and dancer from Chicago. <laughs> That's quite a build-up. Think I deserve it? Why not? You are a singer and dancer, aren't you? Mm, well, sure. And uh, you say you've been in show business since you were nine, so you must be well-known. To the agents, at least. And uh, you are beautiful. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Lane, thank you for them kind words. I mean it. Yeah, I know. Why do you always kid when something really touches you? Look, let's not talk about me. <laughs> Why not? Most girls like nothing better than to settle down for a nice long talk about themselves. Well, then maybe I'm different. All right. Well, what shall we talk about? Why not talk about you? Me? 
But I'm not nearly such a colorful topic. Oh, you'll do. At least until something better comes along. Oh, you don't say. Okay. Now, this was your idea, so you'd better carry the ball. Well, what do you want to know about me? The witness is on the stand. Hmm. You mean I should be the lawyer for the prosecution? Or for the defense. Which side would you like me to be on? Oh, I think you can guess that. Naturally, I'd feel better having you with me than against me. But you knew that, didn't you? Not exactly. Well, then you can take my word for it. Now, what do you want to know? That is, that you don't know already. My life's an open book. Is it? Well, maybe so. I don't imagine a person could get into much mischief here in Wakefield, even if they wanted to. Oh, wait a minute. Now, don't be too sure about that. If you have the idea, like most city slickers have, that nothing ever happens in the country, you're going to find out you're all wrong. Oh, well, I guess something must happen once in a while. People would go nuts. But I never have understood exactly how people in a town like this spend their time. Huh. Well, that's easy. They work pretty darn hard, for one thing. Yes, I know, but I mean, for recreation. What do you do? Oh, you mean me personally? How do I while away the long winter evenings? Yeah. Oh, I manage. I go to a movie every so often. Once a week at the Bijou when the bill changes. Yes, go on. Oh, well, I might play cars with some of the fellas once in a while, uh, just for fun. Mm-hmm. Go on. Hey, look, have you got something special in mind? No, just curiosity. Well, naturally, I have friends. Friends? Masculine or feminine? Both. Tell me about them. <laughs> See, now I am beginning to feel as if I'm being cross-examined. Well, remember, you said your life was an open book. Yeah, yeah, and it is. But I didn't expect you to go over each page with a magnifying glass. <laughs> but um, I, I think I know what you're getting at. Do you really? Oh, sure, sure. Like most women, you want to find out what sort of girls I go around with. Am I right? <laughs> you know, you're certainly the most self-satisfied guy I've met in a long time. Well, you don't say. You mean, uh, even including your boyfriends in the city? What boyfriends? Oh, now, look, Lily, I know darn well you don't spend your evenings knitting. I might. Uh-huh. Not with that figure and those big blue eyes. Besides, I have inside information. What do you mean by that? Oh, Peggy told me a few things. And the rest I sort of doped out for myself. What did Peggy say? Oh, oh she said you didn't let the grass grow under your feet. In other words, I get around? Well, don't you? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't expect me to spend my free time doing crossword puzzles, would you? That's just what I said. Not with your looks. You just said that, too. But you haven't answered my question. You say I'm sure of myself. Now, what's your reason? Well, I, I don't know exactly. <laughs> okay, that makes us even. Neither do I. You're just one of those guys who don't care nothing for nobody. Is that it? No. no I didn't say that. You see, I don't think anyone can get along all by himself. I think everyone needs to be... What? Well, Lily... To be close to someone. Someone he cares for. Lily Devon's first evening in Wakefield. The beginning of a new life. But as Lily listened to Randy Lane's words, she felt uneasy. Something was threatening her carefully built up self-sufficiency. Randy Lane was sure of himself. He wasn't a simple country boy she could twist around her finger. For a moment, Lily almost wished she'd never come to Wakefield. Somehow, she was afraid.